this review is special. Unlike my other reviews where I was inferring or assuming the intentions of the writer, I actually spoke with the writer of the Iconoclast series, Mike Shell, and it was a blast. It was so much fun. Before I get into it, I'm gonna show you a little bit of an animation trailer just to, you know, get you in the right tone. There is no gentle way to say this, Sir Auric. A strange plague has affected the Citadel, and your daughter is among the sick. What? What plague? It's complicated. What? What must be done? We must return it. The relics must be sent back to its home. In the Barrowlands. Oof, oof. I do not believe you, mortal. You seek to deceive me as those before you did. The Ushu were destroyed over the child. You dare lie to your god? You are not my god. It isn't already obvious this is going to be a gosh review the iconoclast trilogy is one of the fantasy trilogies that i enjoy the most aching god was one of the most memorable books i read in 2021 i was very surprised to find out that that was his first attempt at writing a fantasy novel mike shell belongs to that upper echelon of indie authors that write with lots of quality and uncommon writing freedom I read Aching God, I loved it. I read Sinita, I loved it more than I liked Aching God. And then I read Idols 4. Idols 4 was, was just like so, so good. I thoroughly enjoyed his take on religion, philosophy, redemption, and lore that was in his exposition. Normally, I don't like extraneous exposition, but in this book, it works for me because he doesn't reveal too much about the world. So imagine this. For every unit of exposition, there are like five extra units of mystery that is added. And what that does is that it creates this buildup that is just waiting to burst. And the payoff in the climactic moments are epic. Mike Shell has a way of writing very colorful characters. By day, Mike Shell is a psychotherapist. So he carries his experience and creates this cause and effect relationship with the characters and their actions in this world that is very very dark everyone is tainted with some kind of trauma and is evident throughout the book for instance let's just say if someone were to fight a demon right they wouldn't make a heroic pose after they will have the corresponding ptsd and trauma that is appropriate to that moment and that is something that keeps the characters very grounded and very relatable and also very interesting for me that's one of the primary differences between grimdark and dark fantasy but that's just for me although mike shaw kills off characters and no one is safe absolutely no one he doesn't kill characters arbitrarily and this was something that we discussed during the discussion it was very interesting to see his train of thought around killing off characters now if you're someone who isn't really satisfied when male writers write female characters give this book a chance he puts a lot of female characters in the spotlight they felt very real very rounded very very prominent in the book so the way mike shell writes battles and depicts violence he does it in a way where it doesn't get old they are short and sweet and very effective it doesn't drag on for too long where you feel like the violence is just there to to fill in space when i read the book the writer in me was completely quiet i just enjoyed like a pure reader and i don't remember the last time i read a book and forgot to analyze it as i was reading because i enjoyed it that much the discussion i had with him a lot of the questions i asked are from a writer's perspective guys trust me you need to watch that discussion if you've read the book i just learned so much about his writing process and his intentions which i feel like the most important thing while he was writing such a masterpiece 
This book has a lot of cool names like Garasha, Jadashela, Timilas, Ushul, Vesham. It sounds so epic. How do you come up with these names? I don't know. So if you've watched my reviews in the past, I've complained about the last books of trilogies. First of all, there's nothing wrong with a book being predictable. But if a book has not been predictable because say it's very character based from book one and book two, and that is something about the book that you enjoy, in the third book right it becomes predictable because all the plot lines that haven't been tied plus all the variables that are available all of a sudden become very obvious and of course the writer himself is trying to finish the books it's easy to like just predict them which is something i don't enjoy mike shell nailed it in idols 4. in fact i feel like idols 4 was my favorite out of the three books something that is very prevalent is the tone that he set he was able to do that because of his prose there's a way he puts words together every sentence is dripping with dark epicness the prose is so fluid and smooth it reduces those moments when you're reading and you forget to understand i know you know what i'm talking about <laughs> It, I feel like it's a book for everyone who appreciates the darker side of fantasy literature. Now yes, I call it fantasy literature. You can argue with fantasy is literature in the comment section. I don't give a shit, but for me it is like it's anyway. Now, is this book character based or plot based? It's both. The story is very much centered around the characters but there's a very strong plot guiding the story. I feel so honored and privileged that on Epic Tales and Steve's podcast, he read the first chapter of his new book called Nova Mundi. And guys, it's already promising to be so dope. He read the first chapter in the discussion, which is here. I've already uploaded the video. It's going to be here in two days. Stay epic and peace.